Welcome back, takers, to another edition of the AUDL Take. We've got an exciting show for you this week, and before we jump into our player profile, we're going to talk about the AUDL Greatest Teams of All Time Bracket. We've moved on to the next stage, and pretty much, if you've been keeping track of it, no real surprises there. Everybody who's pretty much won a championship has moved on, but this is where it's going to get exciting. Make sure you look into the AUDL.com, check out everything Evan Lepler is doing for that series. It's very exciting right now with nothing going on to see kind of where the greatest teams of all time really compare against each other and where they'll stand. And I think that final four is gonna be really exciting and honestly if you're Bo Kittredge I have a feeling you're gonna feel like you're top dog because I have a feeling all four of those teams that'll be in the top four are gonna be pretty much all Bo Kittredge teams so keep tuning into that as we are in a delayed kind of moment here in the AUDL season for this week's player profile we're getting into my favorite team the Atlanta hustle and a player that I've actually gotten to work with a few times doing camps for kids like little workouts for them to expose them to frisbee but he's really been someone who's just been explosive in the ultimate scene not originally from here but once he showed up the first year in 2015 immediately got on the team and has been a big part of the Atlantic community if you figured out by now you know I'm talking about Matt Smith now this guy is an explosive player but before we really get into the history let's just talk about the 2019 season. He had a pretty good year, but actually when we talk about more of what he's done before, this was actually one of his quieter years. Now he had 23 assists, he had 33 goals, I believe eight blocks, he finished with a plus minus of 50, and he also had 31 hockey assists. So across the board, he's got a lot of solid numbers. And you know, those eight blocks, they're probably all his, you know, special scorpion kick block he's great at getting the foot blocks and he's explosive on those turns he can get back and score goals he really has a solid year but we're going to talk more about his history with atlanta he has quieted down over the years i don't think he's any worse of a player he's still explosive in his speed but other teams have started to figure out how to defend him pretty well and he's kind of changed his role within the atlanta team a lot of younger players are coming in and getting a lot of the goals that matt matt smith used to get now I think him trying to find a way to bring in these new players and also facilitate the offense in a different way than he's done in the previous years. For 2019, it was a solid year, but here's someone who's also doing things outside of just what he's doing on the field. He's getting more involved with the AUDL itself, doing his youth camp initiative, making sure to expose the sport to everyone he can, getting more young people involved. He's that's something I think that's very important for the AUDL as well as Ultimate as a whole. I think our best chance of getting the sport to grow is introducing it to younger people who don't even know it exists. I mean, we have a lot of adults right now that don't even know that Ultimate exists or get it confused with disc golf or just dogs catching a frisbee. So having someone like Matt Smith, who is just very charismatic, great person to talk to. He's always willing to do interviews and understands the media side of the sport, trying to make it, it's a business in a lot of ways. And so it's being a pro athlete isn't just about being the best at the sport, but also being used to being in front of cameras, talking in front of people, doing kind of a media blitz with getting the, the word out there of the sport. Someone who really just goes along with it and does the best he can to promote himself and the sport in the best way possible. I think it's really important to have someone like him on this youth initiative. So let's talk about kind of the history of Matt Smith as he has been one of the few players who actually has played in the league since 2012 and it started in Rhode Island Rampage did pretty well there I think he had about 23 goals and uh, you know really hadn't made a name yet because in the sense the ADL was still brand new a lot of people weren't sure really what it was and that first year was full of wild scenarios with just random teams coming from different places you know Rhode Island Connecticut it was kind of all over the place and then the turmoil of some of the legal proceedings that happened after you really weren't people weren't sure where this league was going and then you had the MLU kind of come up right after and so there was just kind of this wild wild west as far as pro sports and ultimate goes but then he comes down to Atlanta and immediately has just one of the most stellar seasons I think anybody could have ever guessed no one saw this coming especially people from Atlanta that first year in Atlanta for Matt Smith was truly an incredible year as far as an offensive player he immediately came out of the gate and got 66 goals that season I believe his highest ever for Atlanta came away with a plus minus of 76 and just tremendously did what he needs, what he does best. Lays out, flies away, gets these discs, speeds behind everyone. Nobody knew really how to defend him. No one had really heard of him much. He wasn't that big name that he is now today in the ultimate world. And so a lot of people saw this kind of short, smaller guy 
Good, you know, they're just kind of expecting him to go under and get those feeds, but he was going deep, and I mean burning past people. And that disc, it didn't seem, it didn't seem to matter how far you threw it. He was going to chase it down. He was going to dive through the air and make the goals. So that first year, he didn't really have a huge amount of assists. I believe it was 17 in 2015, but he scored 66 goals with a plus minus of 76. His hockey assists were on the lower end of the 20s, around 22. But people immediately knew this guy's a scorer. This is somebody we're going to have to defend in a whole other way when we play Atlanta and you saw that kind of into the next year the goals kind of took a dip but he was still putting up I think he got around 58 goals that season he was still a huge threat in the in the deep part of the field he was getting open downfield he was hopping over everybody and it really wasn't too long 2016 you saw kind of a dip but you started to see his assist numbers and his hockey assist numbers start to kind of move up I think teams started to adjust around him knowing we can't just let this guy go deep. It can't just be a one-on-one. -on -one. If we see Matt Smith going deep, someone from the back needs to be ready and pull pull off their guy and kind of poach that deep space. And so you started to see him have to facilitate a more kind of facilitate a role of moving the disc down the field, keeping helping reset the offensive handlers and keeping that offense moving down the field. And that's when you started to see assist numbers go up and his goal numbers start to take a dip. But you see kind of a big change in 2017 where the goals come right back up. I think he gets around 60 or so goals that season, or I believe 58 goals that season. And his hockey assists were at a higher number too. I think they're around 30 or, or 27. So you start to see that here's a guy who realizes I'm going to be kind of that bailout option for our handlers. When that stall count gets going big and they're getting scared, it's getting high and it's getting higher up there, I'm either gonna go deep or I'm gonna come under and help reset at that and that actually led to a lot more of his hockey assists i think when he gets to that red zone area matt smith is such a threat and he's so quick off those first few steps that a defender really doesn't want to get burned in that situation and so he's been able to kind of threat for a score but then get back out get the reset and then help get the throw to the player who's going to then throw the score i think that's why his hockey assist numbers have gotten bigger he's making that catch right outside there that end zone and he's looking to get that assist if not he's really good at getting the the frisbee to the next player and then that player getting the score it's his quickness of allowing everyone to move so fast that the defense has a hard time adjusting and that's why i think his assist numbers have gone up and his hockey assist numbers have gone up but in turn that has really hurt his goals now i don't think matt smith is worried about his goals going down i think what he has proven is that he truly is a team player somebody who really revolutionized how this offense in Atlanta works and I think they don't have to run it through him but he kind of puts himself in a position to bail out of a lot of his players and also he can do that whether he's going under or going deep he's somebody who knows how to keep the offense moving and look at his completion percentage I mean it's amazing I mean he is staying with his throws he's completing a lot of his like around 95 to 96 percent uh, all of his years. I mean, we're talking his whole, whole entire career has been 95 or above. So someone who never really drops the disc, who always makes great throws and keeps the disc moving, he's become just a problem for a lot of players. It's not, are you going to just shut down Matt Smith, but how can you limit his success? And I think as you see these new players coming in, I think Eli, I mean, when Nathan Vickroy came in, I think that's when you also saw these goal numbers started to go down because Smith was just not the only threat anymore but you still had to worry about him but now he's becoming that guy well i'm going to get open in the red zone and i'm going to get that throw to the player who's going to give it to eli or who's going to give it to a zach Avello. you know we don't have vicroy anymore but that was kind of what i think he realized he was really good at he knew he still has that deep threat and people are still worried about him but they're more aware of him and now with new players like eli coming in who are just scoring tons of goals now that focus is going to start to shift to those players and that's actually probably going to help matt smith get his goals back up and the more and more we keep pulling in these kind of goal scorer kind of threat players is only going to make Matt Smith a better player as far as the numbers go this is a guy who's just done an amazing thing he came into a town nobody knew who he was tried out in 2015 and immediately people were like we need to get this guy involved and since then has done great work in Atlanta he's doing great work in the AUDL I've been just very honored to be able to work alongside with him all these years and just watch his development as a player and just how he, he works in this community it's just a great person to have involved in the AUDL in Atlanta. 
and I hope he can play here for you know the rest of his career. And I'm hoping one of these years, and I feel confident, but if we keep pulling in some of this great youth, Matt Smith could be one of those players that is there for us and really could lead us through a playoff run and get us into championship weekend. And hopefully one day Matt Smith can hold that trophy up and be an AUDL champion. Well, that's going to do it for this AUDL Take episode. Thanks again for tuning in. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Let's keep growing this thing. Thanks again for tuning in. I will see you all next week.